So we should start with Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Uhunaktu Sahaviriyam Karvavahe Tejasvina Vadhitamastu Ma Vidvisha Vahe That knowledge in Knowledge, Eastern wisdom is all about knowledge. So in this verse, the knowledge should move my mind. Normally what happens, we chant the mantras and it doesn't move the mind at all. It is purely an intellectual exercise. That is why it is known as an intellectual exercise. Sahana to protection. May we both be protracted. So here is a disciple should be protected and also the teacher should be protected. From what? From ignorance, <clears throat> from duality, from delusion, from confusion. So what it means that I should have a level of awareness and attention to grasp this knowledge. The moment the journey begins, I'm aware and alert. Sahana bhunaktu me. That existence nourishes. Think. Think. Just for a think for a moment. Think that this water, air, and these five elements do not. Even the sun. Just take a, The sun does not exist. <clears throat> Nourishment is not there. Air does not exist. Nourishment is not there. We take it so casually. Why we take it casually? Because of the subtle ego we have. We have a selfishness. So that is why the master is saying, huh? Sahano bhunaktu. Sahano bhunaktu. May we be nourished together. Huh? Sahaviryam karva vahe. May we have a tremendous energy. Because if I don't have an energy, I cannot participate through my intellect, through my understanding. Energy is required for the intellect to grasp, to receive, and to contemplate, to absorb and assimilate the knowledge. So that energy is pointed towards the intellect. Sahaviryam karvavahe. Yeah, I have already done it. Tejasvina vadhi damastu. So what will happen? <clears throat> the journey, the knowledge, it's all about the knowledge. So let the knowledge enlighten me. Tejasvina vadhi damastu. The knowledge should bring the glow in your life, not the cosmetics. <laughs> Think of it. So it is the knowledge should... Uh, bring that glow, that that vigilance, that brilliance in our life. Why there brings the brilliance in my life? Because now I don't have that ignorance. I don't have that selfishness. I don't have that duality and a delusion at any point in my life. Ma vidvisha vahi. There should not be any duality and we against each other. Not only envy here, but envy is gone once and for all from the life in our relationship between the teacher and the student, huh? between our son and the daughter and all kinds of relationship. That envy, that jealousy. Why the jealousy should, should go away? Because jealousy is the last rung of the six enemies of the mind. Before that, there is an ego. Without ego, I cannot have jealousy. And before ego, there is a delusion. Ego is itself is a delusion. And before the ego, delusion is there. And before the delusion, there is a satisfaction and dissatisfaction in fulfilling the desires. So it is the last rung, normally, we say. We'll be doing another two or three sessions to, to have a strong foundation. And then we will start with the text written by one great master that I had been taking on Saturday's session from Panchdashi. So I was taking the chapter number six. 
But now we will start with the chapter number one. So just to uh, revise it, so I said there should be a 360 degree understanding. And 360 degree understanding means that mind is living in a moment, mind is aware. But when the mind should be aware, when the mind is pure, impure mind cannot be aware. So when we are talking of the impurities of the mind, when we are talking of the jealousy, hatred, and envy, we understand in Eastern wisdom, it is not required to keep these impurities in the mind blocks my awareness. That is the only thing that we should understand it clearly. But yes, it helps me in the personal, professional, and social life also. <clears throat> so enemy blocks and lowers my awareness. Ego lowers my awareness. Binding desire lowers my awareness. Now I will keep my all the desires and my binding desires in my mind. And one hour session I will attend. So I will lift my awareness in one hour session. And after that, same desire and the envy is going to play in your mind. And you think that you will be awakened. Answer is no. It is not possible. Not at all possible. It is not a part-time job. I have to live into the heightened state of awareness all the time. It's not a part-time job. So now see, I'm just, look, I'm helping you to absorb this knowledge in a totally different way. So now, oh yes, now I understand that it is not possible to live into the heightened state of awareness. So how to organize my outer life so that I can continue to live in my heightened state of awareness? Do you remember? I said you self-fulfillment or the desire fulfillment. External life works through the three desires, three groups of desires, and internal life works through one group of desire. Goal of life inside, goals in life outside. I have to think, I have to organize, I have to reorganize until everything is set outside. Everything is set outside. <clears throat> now, I don't see there is any, any issue, you know. I sit in a room and sometime I spend 20 and 22 hours in the same room. David has seen it. You all have seen it. Uh, or everyone has seen it, except Daniel and Terry. Same room, 20 hours, 22 hours. Why? There is a balance, perfect balance between the outer desires and the inner. Think. If you cannot organize your own life, and then with the ego, I will organize. I will give you a piece of advice to the others. Not at all possible. Are you understanding, Sam, awakened one? Only awakened one is Sam in this group. You have to work on your life. So what is happening? What I said, I said you strike an ultimate harmony. Ultimate harmony in your external life. It is possible. At present, your mind says it is not possible. It is 100% possible. You can strike the harmony through your knowledge and through the mind outside. And in that harmony demands, you have a specialized thought, thinking, speech, and action. Oh, so you mean to say that without striking a harmony, awakening cannot take place? No, it can take place, but it will not last long. It will create a lot of challenges because the impurities of the mind will remain present. 
And that is what we are doing. Why I said so? I said so. That okay, one hour is very important. And the, that one hour is also, I have so many events in agenda that it becomes difficult for me to, to attend one hour session. <clears throat> I'm not able to strike the harmony. <laughs> Think. So yes, awakening can take place without striking a harmony. You leave everything, you go to the monastery and there you devote your entire life to the study, contemplation, and reflection. You have left the personal, professional, social life. You have become almost like a monk. That is also possible. But we all are living with him in, a, in the world outside. I have to strike the harmony. If you think that just by sitting in meditation, awakening can take place without striking a harmony, not possible. Disharmony is the result of the impurity of the mind. Are you understanding? Disharmony in my life is the result of the impurity of my mind. I have to look at it. It has nothing to do with outside. Can this computer talk to me? No. I have to talk to the computer. Computer, switch on. Let me open it. Are you working fine? Yes, you're working fine. So I have a session. Are you getting it? With everything, with every object. Huh? So why I, why I come 10 minutes before I have to check my internet connection? Long back, you know, it happened. That's a gone. Two, three years ago, David told me all the, a couple of the tricks. I took the help of the Danish. And once I realized that this is the way, I have to talk to the computer so that it is ready for a session. One example of the harmony. I have to talk to my honey in such a way to strike the harmony. Now I'm giving you some. Without that harmony, Striking the harmony to the external world, if you think, living a worldly life and you are thinking that, ah, oh, just close my eyes, I'm just out of the body experience. Can you live out of the body experience 24 by 7? Sam, I'm here, not there. You have to understand. So that's why I'm bringing, just in these three sessions or two sessions, I'll just summarize everything and then we'll go totally in a different perspective. So desire I have, my mind should be <clears throat> inspired. The desire of all the desire is awakening. Desire of all the desires is liberation. Desire of all the desires is seeking that permanent peace and happiness. So when you strike the harmony, your mind lives into the heightened state of awareness and it is constantly, oh, where is the peace and happiness while talking to you? Where is the peace and happiness talking to honey? Where is the peace and happiness uh, eating, driving, doing all the activities? So what happens? The pure mind with a heightened awareness helps you to live in a moment in all these activities. Now bring down to a very simple steps. There are only three things in the entire universe. I as an individual being. Individual being means, individual means body, breath, mind, intellect, ego, plus consciousness. This is known as the individual. In Western uh, concept, it is known as the soul. That is why we say this individual undergoes a suffering. So we say the soul is suffering. That is the one. Second is the entire world outside. 
And third is the supreme consciousness or existence or the God. Only three things are there. You, for me, you are a part of the entire world. One is the individual and third is the supreme consciousness or the existence. So I have to see that that existence, one part of that existence is an individual, other part of the existence is the entire world. How I separate it, how I say that this is the world? Tell me, let me tell you a very interesting thing. Can you create a line, a border between an individual and the world outside? Just create a wall. <laughs> now here is my body and here is the world outside. Body is made up of the world. This body, physical body, is made up of the food that you have received from the world outside. Where is the striking line, line where you say, here I am and here is the world? Just find out. Look at our masters, the way they have. So I have created that wall. That wall is of ego. That wall is of impurities of the mind. Are you thinking? Are you with me? You cannot create a wall between an individual and the world outside. For you, I am the world. For me, you are the world. How it is possible that I remain as an individual when you see me as the world outside? So that individuality does not exist. That individuality is the ego, the impurity, the ignorance, the duality, the delusion. So when you solve this puzzle, <clears throat> what happens? What is left is the existence. Why? We do not remain. No, we remain. We remain as a waves. Waves to the water. The way the master approaches the subject, so I'm giving those words in your, in your head. So once we understand, this is the basics I have to, I have to follow. If I don't follow these basics, uh, nothing can be achieved. You may go into the higher meditation for an hour, it is possible, or two hours. But once you return from it, you are the same person again. Same frustration, same anxiety, same duality, same conflict. <clears throat> so the masters laid down the steps that I have briefed you already. One is the Mangala Charan, creating an auspiciousness. Telling the mind, this is the desire of all the desires when you wake up in the morning. Until you retire to the bed, you'll continue to live in that state of the auspiciousness. That is setting the context. In a modern language, I told you, it. you set the context. You start with a desire for purity of the mind. Just think of it. There is a purity of the mind. Will there be envy, jealousy, duality, conflict, delusion? So how to address my mind every day? Mind can gather the impurity in any, in many ways possible. Your honey looks in a particular way, impurity of the mind. <laughs> Do you, don't you think so? Uh, in the Walmart, you know, the cashier looks in a way, what? And then you are the impurity of the mind. <laughs> you know, many small things. You know. Oh, there's a pain. How? Oh, I have a headache. I will not attend the session. Impurity of the mind. 
I have to live into that awareness. I started with that journey. So Mangala Charan, you know, you set the context. You, you set, uh, or you can say you remember a uh, desire of all the desires in the mind is awakening, realization, and transformation. That is my goal. Mentally, emotionally, you are doing all the activities. If you like. I have a lot of activities after the session. Yes, I'll be doing it. But Mangala Charan remains with me. Then what happens, then I have to structure the inquiry. I discussed in detail about it. We have to structure the inquiry means the four connections. I must wake up in the morning and ask yourself, what is the goal of life? Goal of life is to go to the doctor and get me treated. Now the goal of life is awakening. Secondary goal that I have some problem, I have to approach the doctor. Why? Ultimate goal of approaching the doctor is also permanent happiness. I should remember this. How are you getting? I'm just telling you the frame of the mind, the state of the mind. So when we say the purity of the mind, it is the state of the mind. Almost it appears the wave is saying that I'm the water, I'm the water, don't treat me as a wave. Wave is the mind. Are you getting it? Then just think in this way. Allow your mind to think in this way. Wave is saying, no, I'm the water, don't treat me like a wave. So not only you are in auspiciousness, now you, you structure the inquiry. Oh, this is the goal. But then I have to become a qualified seeker. Huh? The subject matter is the real self or the pure consciousness. So I have to recognize that subjective pure consciousness without any label, relationship, attachment. Can I see that that real self is independent of anything and everything? Can my mind reflect that? Mind, mind is a wave. Can the mind reflect, can the wave reflect that I'm the water? I'm the mind when I'm talking to you. I'm the wave as an individual, but still I'm the water inside. So for that, I have to qualify as a seeker. Qualify as a seeker. And you know, so the qualified seeker, subject matter, and the result. Result is the end of suffering, I can bet you. Uh, it is an end of suffering and awakening to that existence in our life. End of suffering. End of suffering. All the suffering from the mind comes to an end. Now the wave for me as an individual which is seeking permanent peace and happiness from the world outside has stopped completely. It doesn't mean that I do not eat the food I like. If it is available, I like it, I eat it. If it is not available, I remember the principle, live to eat or eat to live. So I'm happy. I'm happy in both the conditions. Someday you don't get the food you like, even if you have millions of dollars. So you realize the intervention of the existence at that particular moment, even if you possess this. Are you getting it? I have certain limitations. So those, that limitations creates the individuality. I don't recognize that limitation and then I get upset.
So these four connections have to be understood clearly. So once I know the subject matter clearly, desire of all the desires, I know the result will be an end of suffering and awakening, and I have to become a qualified seeker from where I have to get knowledge. So there the teacher and the knowledge, they go, teacher and the text go together. So teacher and the text and the qualified seeker creates a master and a disciple tradition. And we have a lot of emphasis on the teacher and the disciple tradition. From where I get this knowledge of this self, how to purify the mind, we, no, no one talks about it. No science, no cycles, even the psychology doesn't talk about it. So I have to recognize the different terminology, the different words, and I have to understand what does it mean by the impurity of the mind. I am calm, I am peace. Still, I don't remember the goal of my life, so there is still some impurity left. So what do we think? Ah, I have deep relaxation and calm. I volunteered that one session of the Ukrainian. I said, why don't you think? Everyone shares their experiences. I'm very relaxed and calm. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you, Guruji. I said, how long your relaxation and calmness remains? Why don't you think about it? And in this session I volunteer, hardly one person thinks about it. Then, then the, you will say that the now teacher is exploiting. You are not teaching the journey because you are not a qualified seeker. So that is why structuring the inquiry not intellectually, but applying it in daily life is very important. If we want to reach to that state, if we want to relax and calm, it's okay. Uh, continue then, continue the journey. But if we want a higher level, I want to bring about a change in my behavior and attitude. It is important. And then the third, once I structure the inquiry, then I need a kind of mental maturity in the to treat the path of path of the self-discovery. And to have that mental maturity and intellectual acumen, I need the fourfold practices. You see, see the beauty. That is the way it should go. I should not leave any any step. You leave any step, you forget it. Big in the morning and you are, you are in a hurry. You know what happened? You know, this is all uh, your mind remembers some past impression. And for 15 minutes, your mind is already upset. And then you remember, now I have to practice meditation. You start the audio and start doing the meditation. You miss the Mangalacharan. You miss the, you miss the four connection. You did not remember. You did not remind your mind. Mind, come on, remember this. Talk to your mind. And if it happens, you will, I can bet you that you do it for a week and you will see your entire perspective of the life has changed. If you succeed in doing every day, <laughs> even for seven days, the moment you wake up in the morning and until you retire to the bed and you will see, oh, anxiety was there, yes, it, in a flash it has come, it has gone. We have yet to reach to that state of awakening, but by doing all the first three steps, you have, you have started seeing the result. So in Sadhan Chatushta, you already know, we have fourfold, uh, we have four, four practices. So you remember again and contemplate and reflect on these four issues. What are the four issues? 
what are the four issues, four problems of the uh, mind that I talk to you? The doubt regarding the validity of the teaching. Why you leave Mangla Charan in the morning? Doubt regarding the validity of the teaching. How to remove that doubt? I have to do an experiment. I have to apply in my life. If I don't apply in my life and I say, no, I still have a doubt, how it is possible to remove the doubt? What else? What are the other ways? Think. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to follow a car dogma and release it. No, it has nothing to do with it. Just follow. Let peace is my essential nature and it is the nature of every being on this earth and you contemplate, pick up only one to put your mind on the track. Or if you pick up the mantra, nothing like it. We have been picked up. So doubt regarding the validity of the teachings of the entire Western wisdom. First step is to understand it clearly. You have already understood. We are already having in this MI consciousness, I think 18 or 19 session. After listening to all the 19 hours of the lesson, if the mind is not changing, what else? Whom to blame? Second doubt, doubt regarding the object to be realized. I have been repeating it. I don't see the real self. How can I realize it? I see everything tangible. I see the money is tangible. My relay, my honey is tangible. My house is tangible. What is tangible? It is waiting to become intangible. <laughs> Body is waiting to be <laughs> dissolved. Mind dissolves every day in deep sleep. Body dissolves in deep sleep every day. So are you the sleeper or are you the waker? Tell me. No, I am both. How can you be both? Or I can be something different. So that different something was present in deep sleep as a sleeper. That different something is also present as a waker in me. I have to discover that. So you see, this master gives you hundreds of logic to make us understand, to remove the doubt regarding the object to be realized. <clears throat> have you heard me? Have you heard me without any distraction? Yes or no? If yes, well, wonderful. If no, I have to remove those distractions. So while contemplating, while listening, there should not be any distraction uh, of the mind. Otherwise, mind will not receive what the teacher wants to give you. Biggest problem in our in our life and especially it has aggravated to such a greater extent in the modern world what is that problem distraction well how the distraction works what i say do you really understand in the same way what i say or your mind gives your own interpretation 99.999% your mind gives your own interpretation to understand what I am saying, what your honey is saying, what the society is saying. <sighs> we say this is distraction. The highest level of distraction. The small distractions, you know, is there... Uh, you you feel some pain while listening to me, pain in the body. It is a small distraction. You continue to do some postures, it will go away. That's 
that is the third problem. Uh, the restless mind, so that distraction must go in order to absorb this knowledge. And the fifth, fourth problem is what we say, ignorance. Again, understand, ignorance, misunderstanding about who I am. I am here, the world is outside. You have a big misconception. Can you create a wall? Just you create a boundary where you begin and end and where the world begins and end. <laughs> and still we are using, still we are living into that um, <laughs> misunderstanding and mis... I'm here, you're there. Now your body is there. <laughs> My body is here. You are referring to the body. Are you the body? No, I'm not the body. So why, then why are you saying that I am here, that you are there? Boundary is not there. Find out. Contemplate and reflect. Where is the boundary? Bound, there is no boundary. There is something like, wave says, no, here I am and here is the water. Come on, where is the boundary? <laughs> Are you understanding that? Our masters have realized that beauty. Oh, they have contemplated, reflected for over, for years and years in the forest and they have recognized, oh, what a surprise that I am the world outside, I am the world. I am the existence, you see? So that misunderstanding has to be removed. But until we prepare ourselves with these steps, some people are born qualified seekers. You have to understand that. Not all. Some people are born qualified seekers. The master says, Mangala Sharon, they define it. They say, yes, I got it. It is now 24 by 7. Setting the context of four questions, yes, four connection, it is there. Mind is always seeking that. Viveka, uh, the sadhan chatushtaya, the viveka, the discernment and the dispassion, yes, it is already there. Viveka, and at the age of 20s, can you imagine? You see the misconception of modern psychology? Modern psychology says, you know, adolescence, you know, adolescence. Adolescence, there are emotional changes. You already know what I mean to say. I don't want to go for in detail about it. At that age, he came to United States. So one girl was attracted to her, to him. You can read uh, her, her book. She is later on known as the Sister Nivedita. Mental, it is, we say it is a mental maturity. We don't say it is because I'm driven by so much of sensuality at that is where this guy says, Because your mind is moving in body. Some people reach at a later stage. It's okay. No need to worry about it. I have not to become Vivekananda. I have to see where I stand and from there I start with it. So think of these parables and metaphors that I gave you, and especially I have twisted the metaphor of wave to the water. <clears throat> wave is saying that I am separate and different from the water. This entire ocean is the world, and I am different from the ocean. How you can be different from the ocean? 
when I say I am here and the world is outside, you cannot differentiate it. You cannot differentiate it. Create the boundary here and now. Where is the boundary? And still we have been using it. So I have to use it for the sake of convenience, for the sake of living in the material world. But deeper inside I am aware. I am aware. That is another meaning of living in a moment. Living in a moment is not so, uh, oh, no, I'm living in a moment. I'm angry, so I'm living in a moment. It will not work. It will not work. I'm going to divorce you, I'm living in a moment. We made it a, just a joke. That is not the way <laughs> this Eastern wisdom works. Anyhow, this is another way to point out this summary. I'll have one more session, then we will start seriously. One verse, I'll repeat the verse, I'll translate the verse into English, then we will understand the meaning, and then we will see what is point to contemplate and how to reach to that state. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. We'll follow the same teaching of the Ashtavakra Gita. Let us see the verse, what the verse says. Yadi deham pratakratyachiti vishram yatishthasi adunai visukhi shantah bandhamukto bhavishyasi. So the translation of the first line Yadi deham pratakratya. If the body is separate, if the body, body is separated, body is separated. If the body is separated, first line, mind rests within, you are in peace, third line is you are in peace and happiness. Come on, what the, who, peace and happiness. If you teach the layman, they say this teacher is crazy. You are peace and happiness and if you continue, if you continue, it results into results into awakening. These are the four lines. If the body is now, why sh as a seeker knows, seeker understands. <clears throat> seeker has heard millions of times that I am not the body. So body is already separate. If I am not David, so I am already separate. I am not uh, Stephen. I am already separate. <laughs> Do you see that? So there the knowledge works. If the body is separated, if, so for seeker life, seeker, for seeker body is already not me. But then I have to experience if the body is not me or not. That is the problem. It is all a contemplation, con you can say contemplative meditation or reflective meditation, which is nothing but a non-practice. So uh, other masters use differently this verse and I use it differently, expression is different. So I'm using in a simple way, you are looking at you are looking at the head and the neck. So there are many ways to approach. This is the beauty of the Eastern West. I'm looking at the head and the neck. It is object of the mind. I have a knowledge of the object. What is that object? Head and neck, head and the neck in the mind. So I know head and the neck means what? I am already separate from the head and the neck. I make it simple today. And once you have 
once you have that awareness, once you have that awareness of separation, you are already calm and relaxed. How come? You say that I have a knee pain. You have a knee pain, but my knee is totally relaxed. Why? I am separate from you. Do you see that? You are not doing any practice. You are not no reading, no mantra, nothing of that sort. Uh, look at the right arm in the same way, objectively. So you are looking at the right arm. Yes. Yes, I, I know. Where is the right arm? Mine says. Very clear, I am saying, you know, very clear. Okay, so... So there is an object of knowledge. What is the object of knowledge? Object of knowledge is my right arm. So I have a knowledge of that object. Yes, I know is the right arm. So when I know something in the mind, that means knower is different from known. Different means what? Separate from the known. So this is what the master is saying. Can you see that how he bridged in one verse four lines the entire journey? So means separate. No, no, you have to look what is happening to the mind. What is happening to the mind when there is a separation? Master says, mind is resting within now. Is it true for you? If it is, if it is, you are already aligned with the master or with the knowledge. Do you see that? Master and the knowledge. Now can you can you ignore the importance of master in a disciple tradition? Master in a seeker tradition. <clears throat> Isn't it so? You are not practicing stillness, but the body becomes still. You are not practicing stillness, relaxation. You are not practicing calmness. You are not practicing to create a joy. And gradually, they start manifesting. How come? How come? We are contemplating. How come it happened? Because it is already there. Because already there. So I translate, I translate this this doubt by saying what I used to say you might have heard with what I said you have a you you find it you are in the midst of a storm wind storm outside your home what you do you rush inside the home close the door do, do you create calmness or calmness is already there inside your home So inside of a real home, that peace and joy is there, are there. So now I, I explained you the third line. 
Oh, the peace and happiness is here and now. Master says, Master says, what he says? Yadi deham pratakratichiti vishramita ta vishtiti vishramita chasi adhunai. He says adhunai. Adhunai Sanskrit word means here and now. Master says, now you are awakened to the peace and happiness. Even for a few seconds, good. Continue the journey. So when you continue the journey, and that awakening takes place. Now this entire journey is based on what we have been learning in the last 30 sessions, laying the foundation. Now you see all the principles are being applied. Let us let us uh, uh, look at this verse again uh, by contemplating. Look at the left arm you are looking. Okay, so whatever you are looking, it is an object. Whatever you can see, experience, feel, think of it, it is an object. I think of Stephen, David, Dennis, Sam. You are object. So same way I'm looking at the left arm, you see it is very easy to see that Randy is separate from me, but it's a very difficult to perceive and become aware the left arm is separate from me. Why it is? Because of the attachment identification because of the ignorance that is what we have been talking in these sessions understand understand clearly we misunderstand oh i have to remain detached so oh so i cannot marry i cannot live in this world they, they are the craziest people I am saying what the master is saying, knower and the known are different and separate from each other. The real knower is always separate. So beginning is made. You see a momentary separation, very good. And then I look at the mind, mind is resting within. And then the mind is resting within. It is picking up the joy and the peace from inside somewhere that I don't know, I have yet to know. Is it not the enough? Is it not enough proof? that there is a real self? That is what we have been talking about. So I'm just inspiring, motivating you to just constantly think about this. What I said, there are the four lines. Where are the four lines of the two? Basically, verses are of two lines, but four are four parts. That would be a proper to say. The first part says, if you separate, or if the body is separate, yadi deham pratakratya, literal translation. A body is separate. But if it is already separate, what to separate? But I don't see this separate, so I have to recognize it is separate. And different. Okay. And then I have to look at the mind. The mind is resting within. Why the mind rests within? Why? 
Can you drive the car without the wheels? No. The wheels of the car is the body. Same way, wheels of the mind is the body. Body is the servant, normally we say. Body is the servant of the mind. Anything from intangible thought, feeling, and emotion, work and activity has to be translated into tangible reality by the body. Now the mind is aware that I'm separate. Can I tell you I'm separate from label of husband, wife, I can use lonely, single, these are all labels, married, or you can all, all precedent. I am separate from the label of husband if you have a problem at your home, from the label of wife if you have a problem at home, lonely if you are living lonely, single. You cannot show me, I can bet you, you cannot show me husband, lonely, single, wife, or so on. This is a secondary level of identification with the body. So if you do not explore the first level of identification, first I am the body, then only I am the husband. First you are the body and then only you are the wife. I am the wave, then I am the large wave, short wave, small wave. So you live, you contemplated, you reflected, it resulted into awareness and you are living into that awareness, that awareness of a moment and then see what happens. I'm not saying peace, happiness, joy, no. I'm just saying you that see what happens. You validate. Uh, this week at least listening to it or once you understand then you can contemplate at least a couple of times First line, if I if you separate, if body is separated, uh, they use the passive voice, body is separated. Then it is not saying mind is resting within. So when the mind is resting within, then it is silent, worse, and that is what I have already explained to you. So then what happens? Peace and happiness is here and now. Oh. You know, when people totally ignorant about this journey, they listen and they translate, literal translation of English, they will say, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So third line is peace and happiness here and now. And if you continue, Adhunayu Sukhi Shanta Bandha Mukto Bhavishyasi, you become free from the bondage and the suffering. Shanti 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 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both of arms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the arms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down, share your experiences. Now are you still? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I've, I've always looked at myself and, and, and looking for balance in, in every way. And when you you said you said this phrase of um, of of, of um, creating harmony, um, and and it just struck me differently. And immediately started thinking that peace and happiness is always with me. And to, to strike harmony. I, I don't have to figure out what all that impurity is. And, and, and I, you know, I'm aware of it. That's the important part. But instead of me trying to figure out everything that's creating the conflict or the duality or basically just the impurity of the mind, I just need to be able to fall back on the tools that you've provided and, and, and the masters have provided to allow me to go back to peace and, and, and happiness because I've experienced that, whether it's during meditation, whether it's X amount of hours, I know what that peace and happiness is. So the rec I have to recognize that any of the impurities is just not peace and happiness. Whatever I need to do to get to peace and happiness, that's what I need to do. And it was just like this aha moment in such simplistic one line of striking harmony. Um, and, and I thank you for that. So Beautiful. And everything else was just, just peaceful. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. One point that is comes out of the reflection and contemplation. You see that I'm translating what he says in the present moment. So when I'm aware of the thought plus the feeling that I'm separate from the world, I'm aware of that impurity. An impurity is unreal, it does not exist. I don't see there is any division between I and the world. So I need not to fight with the impurity. That is what he wants to say. And when that comes, there is a aha moment. How are you, David? Thank you. I always like the uh, Saturday lessons and the and the meditation. It's just kind of a perspective thing. And for me this week, I was able to reflect on myself and realized how much this work is working in my life. And you know me, I like to use analogies, and it's feel, it, it, I'm feeling like I'm driving in a very like a Rolls Royce car down the road, and it's a bumpy road, but I'm not feeling anything that the tires and the shock absorbers are absorbing all the positive and negative going on. And I'm just cruising along nicely in this Rolls Royce. And so today's lesson, I was able to realize that that's kind of how I, my life has become now through this practice. So it's been, uh, it's actually kind of cool. So thank you. Beautiful. I could understand your mind where you are reflecting on. That is also another beautiful way to put it. You see that you have done, say, for example, any person has, uh, let me give an example of my master who lived in Himalayan terrain where there is 10 feet of the snowfall. He used to live in the cave and he lived for eight to nine years. So what will happen to the knees and the joints once he returned from there? So knees and the joints will be remain affected. So that's also a bumpy road. 
but that is not affecting you. You will continue to live into that state of awareness of peace and happiness. Low mind. Uh, oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. My master used to have this famous phrase. Oh mind, dear. Oh mind, uh, you have pain in the body. No worries. This will also pass. It had the pain yesterday. It does not have the pain today. Why? Body is constantly changing. Oh, body is constantly changing because it is not real. <laughs> so you reach to a point and you live into that awareness. Oh, we are getting there. How are you, Brandy? Thank you. I'm, I'm good. Um, my nugget today, my takeaway was that if you can be there for even just a second, you can grow that and I think sometimes I, I want I just want to be um, awakened already and I get a little frustrated and it was a good reminder that progress is incremental and it also gave me like permission or space to just be there for a second and maybe I floated away and maybe I came back but um, it took away some of the pressure I think that in a different way that's kind of what Stephen was saying you know like I, it just um, I don't know it's good Saturday's always good you see the world outside, your own relations who are very close to you, closer than me, they give you the stress and I relieve the stress. Then you have to find out who is closer to you. <laughs> who is closer to you. Yes, you are right in the sense that I wanted to say that second you can enter into that moment in a second, but that second becomes an eternal, where the past, present, and the future merges. And when that is, can I say when that is achieved? No, it is already there. When that is known and realized, you're there. I don't see Samir. You are there. Oh, no, dear. Dennis. Uh, thank you for the lesson. Um, I was during the practice looking at the body, the mind, the thoughts, and uh, seeing that they are different from the one who sees and observes. That is on one hand. On, on the other hand, the mind was contemplating that uh, this body is inseparable from the world. Uh, even on the molecular uh, level, yeah. we, we cannot we cannot label that this molecule is uh, me. me and this not me because there is a constant exchange of of, of the molecules, the atoms, the, the the tiniest particles between the outer world world and yeah. our body and mind. So the notion of of personality, the notion of ego, is is rather imaginary uh, Beautiful. because there, there is no real boundary between my ego and, and something outside of that. It's a beautiful, another way. I have never thought of contemplating in that way. You brought a new perspective. This, Even if you look at this body consists of the matter and the matter consists of the molecules. Molecule consists of atoms. Atom is nothing but electron, proton, and neutron. And in turn, they are simply the energy. But energy is not a consciousness. How can I be the energy or atom or molecules or carbon or hydrogen or oxygen or nitrogen? All the four elements makes the protein, makes the amino acid, makes the enzyme. And still I have continued to say, so it is imaginary. What is imaginary? It deludes me if imaginary is taken as a real. And that is a very thin line. The wave is saying, no, no, I'm not the water. Come on, I'm separate from the water. We have to live into that awareness and then the life changes. Samir is not there. Samir is sleeping. Maybe he is absorbed into meditation. So anyhow, Terry. Um, to me, I, I love the way because it, it's so clear to me 
that you are the body. The fact that the wave, there is no wave. You know, it's just never yes. existed. Yes. Because even it just looks like it exists. It, that is the delusion. It, that is imaginary. <laughs> because even the water that is that it is, is not even the same water ever. Yes. It's different water. <laughs> yes, yes. So I feel, I, then when I try to think about the body, you know, the self, that makes sense to me, yes. that there's no separation between you know the body and the world and and that it's a sort of a creation of your mind beautiful so i i was thinking where where is my mind and am i ever <laughs> without thought yes sometimes i feel like i i have no thought yes but usually the lowest level of thought activity is just awareness of the you know, the brain. Like my mind is using my brain brain to think. Yes. Um and I can't seem to you know, I'd like to be able to even let it go of that, but it doesn't really. Yes. The term. You, you are going beyond what we learned today, and that is a good approach also. But our masters will teach us, will guide us the chain of the thoughts. What happens when I recognize that there is no boundary between I am and the world. Then question comes, who the hell I am? Uh -huh. that, that is one question. Second question is more important that I'm, then I'm going to leave you. Second question, then uh, take an example of the wave. Was this wave present in the water? That is why this wave erupted from the water? Or, or actually the wave is just a superimposition? I want to say that it... And once then, we recognize that, okay. It brings a tremendous transformation to the mind. Hmm. And that is... is it just motion of the water? So we have to understand, from where, does the motion of the water come from the wave or come from the water? <laughs> So we have to go, we have to understand. From the water. <laughs> oh, from the water. Oh, so water creates its own delusion and water dissolves its own delusion. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to understand. <laughs> we are going there. Very good thoughts, you know. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.